Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and welcome to another episode of Plus Ones, a series where we take a single card, break down what it does, and explore what it can do. In a lot of ways, Yu-Gi-Oh! is defined by its forbidden and limited list. Most card games, like Pokemon and Magic the Gathering, have a rotation system where new releases are available to use in the game's standard format for a limited time before they're filtered out. There are several reasons for this, ranging from keeping broken interactions between sets to a minimum, to opening up card design space later on down the line. Yu-Gi-Oh, on the other hand, curates their card pool using the Forbidden and Limited list, a document that's updated semi-regularly, telling players how many copies of certain cards they can play in their decks during a given format. Otherwise, you're allowed to use your cards at the maximum allowable amount whenever you'd like, no matter when they were released. This leads to certain cards gaining a significant amount of notoriety, because when a card leaves the available pool, it's not because the cards overstayed its welcome, but that it had to be actively sealed away, as its very presence warped the competitive landscape around it. This means that, whenever a card is printed that has the effect of a forbidden card, or close to it, it's guaranteed to generate buzz. And that's the case with today's card, Three Tactical Talents. Let's go over what it does. Three Tactical Talents is a normal spell that you can only activate one copy of per turn. When it resolves, you can do either one of three things. Draw two cards, take control of an opponent's monster until the end phase, or you get to take a look at your opponent's hand, then shuffle one card from among them into your opponent's deck. The catch here is that your opponent has to have activated a monster effect during your main phase before you can activate this spell. So basically, you have your choice of resolving Pot of Greed, Change of Heart, or the Forceful Sentry. But that's kind of a misnomer. It's easy to think of this card as being a vessel for older, super powerful effects, but it's really not. Like, imagine they printed a card that was just Forceful Sentry, but you had to wait for your opponent to activate a monster effect before you could resolve it. Would you still play it? My guess is that you wouldn't. The card is so powerful because you can use it as the first card in your turn, gain perfect knowledge about what your opponent's available cards are, and if that wasn't enough, rip out their best combo piece or most devastating piece of interaction, and then play the rest of your cards like normal, perfectly content with the knowledge of what your opponent has available so you can play around it while they're still left in the dark. But when using this modern version, you're not so safe. Let's say you're going first, and one of your key enablers gets negated by Ash Blossom. If you have three tactical talents, then hey, now you can rip a card out of your opponent's hand and gain that knowledge, but the other three cards in your hand better help you get back into the game, or your opponent bricked super hard without the card you got rid of, because otherwise they're about to punish you on their turn. Alternatively, if three tactical talents was a called by the grave instead, you could just negate the Ash Blossom and go on with your plays. But this hypothetical is pretty unfair, and it would be intellectually lazy of me if I didn't address some legitimately good points. Three tactical talents is modal, so you have the option of drawing two cards instead, allowing you the chance to draw more gas to make up for the negated enabler. And yeah, it can, but I'm not super into using conditional cards that might get me back into the game. I value effects that are gonna get me back into the game, and if I draw a brick and my opponent has no need to activate a monster effect on my turn, then I'd much rather have Pot of Extravagance or Desires than this. This solidifies what I feel is a huge hurdle for this card. Two of its effects are proactive, but they're locked behind a reactive condition, greatly diminishing the impact that they have proven to have without this restriction. But this leaves us with its second effect. Taking control of an opponent's monster, I would argue, is a reactive move. Your opponent has to have taken the action of summoning a monster for you to take it after all. The issue though, is that similar stealing effects aren't as difficult to get online. In general, your opponent just has to have a monster for you to steal it, but with three tactical talents, your opponent has to have a monster and have activated a monster effect during your main phase. Once again, we're seeing an example of how being able to activate the effect freely is largely what makes it so powerful. If you activate mind control, you'll either take a key monster or force negation. But with this new spell, you have to provoke specifically a monster effect before you can activate it, so you're still losing out on something important. But looking at these effects individually does detract from the whole. It doesn't matter if there are scenarios where any single effect wouldn't be optimal, because its modal nature means you can always pick the one that's best for you. Lightning Storm is in a pretty similar boat after all, and that card is seeing tons of play. But the issue here is that not controlling any face-up cards is a much easier thing for you to control than 
your opponent has activated a monster effect during your main phase. And when it comes to your effect selection, yeah, there are a ton of worse effects than draw 2 as your worst option, but just because it's not the worst doesn't mean it's the best. We may yet have a format where we can count on our opponent to always have a monster effect ready to go, and in that case, three tactical talents will likely be seen as a great meta call. But in a vacuum, I personally think that having super powerful effects isn't the only thing that makes a card broken, and the restrictions on three tactical talents, much like the prohibitive conditions on which you would resolve Pot of the Forbidden, makes it a lot of hype, but no follow through. But hey, Considering I'm the guy who thought a 49 card zombie deck was at all appropriate to take to an event, it's completely possible that I'm overlooking or underestimating something about this card. What do you all think of this proverb turned proverbial powerhouse? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this plus one, you can give me a plus one by liking and subscribing. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye